So, we were looking at the Kuhn Tucker conditions in the last class, uh, but some students approached me and said that uh, certain concepts were not clear. So, we will fix all the doubts today, first 10 15 minutes we will go through the Kuhn Tucker conditions, we will uh, try to understand it from the same example which we considered in the earlier class. So, this is a uh, minimization problem, this was what 31 problem number 30. Okay. Minimize y is equal to x 1 minus 8 whole square plus x 1 minus 6 whole square subject to x 1 minus x 2 minus 9 greater than 0. I call this greater than or greater than equal to greater than okay, does not matter greater than. So, now we can say psi equal to x 1 plus x 2 minus 9. So, psi, uh, psi is greater than 0. Now, I plot I plot the iso objective lines iso objective it is not iso objective contours on the x 1 x 2 right. So, this leads to uh, different values of y right. So, this center point corresponding to 8 6 corresponds to y equal to 0 that is a solution to the problem in the absence of any constraint. Now, we introduce a constraint x 1 plus x 2 minus 9 is greater than 0 or x 1 plus x 2 is greater than 9. So, we are evaluating the Kuhn Tucker conditions and when we use the rigorous Kuhn Tucker condition procedure, we found out that u is negative. Since the negative value of u is unsustainable, this is not actually a binding constraint for this problem. In a subsequent recalculation, this constraint can be omitted that was the story right. So, now we will uh, we look at it in conjunction with why should u be positive. Let us look at this example, right. Let us look at this example. Now, I have said that u is del y by del psi, okay. Psi is x1 plus x2 minus 9, okay. So, psi greater than 0, what is the solution? solution was 8 6. Okay. Now, I say psi greater than 1. So, what is the psi greater than 1? Where is this new line? That is x 1 plus x 2 is greater than 10. Where will that line be? here correct. So, this line is now what is the solution for this? What is the optimum solution for this? 8 6. When del psi is positive that is from 0 psi was increased to 1 that is del psi was plus 1 y did not change del y was what was del y 0. So, therefore, when therefore, u is equal to therefore, u is equal to u is equal to 0 if u is equal to 0 that particular constraint is inactive. You should not immediately say x 1 plus x 2 minus 18, del psi is a small change in psi. You should not have x 1 minus x 2 minus 200 is greater than 0 or something. Okay. For incremental changes in psi, there is no change in the solution. Therefore, this is not an active or a binding constraint. Therefore, u is 0. So, there is no confusion about this. Okay. Now, let us go to the, now let us go to problem 31. Is this clear? So, therefore, this constraint is not binding. It is not an active one. Now, I only partly answered your question. If the constraint is not active, psi equal to 0, but I have not answered the question. If the constraint is active, why psi should, why u should be positive? u is 0, not psi. Ah. What if the feasible region is reduced, sir? 
Uh, can't it be reduced in such a way that the new Y optimum can be less than the old Y optimum? I am proving it. No, you come out with a situation where it will violate. It is a greater than, it is an inequality, that is why it will not work. For an equality, it will work. Right? We are putting an inequality condition. It will not, you try whatever combination, it will not work. You can, you can try, people have tried over so many decades. <laughs> you can try. Huh? Now we will go to some, when the feasible region is reducing, the the new optimum can at best be equal to the old optimum, but cannot be lesser than that for a minimization problem. Okay? So, what is actually happening here is compared to psi greater than 0, psi greater than 1, you lose certain points, you, you lose certain portion of the feasible region. Okay? Therefore, any solution which satisfies psi greater than 0 will anyway satisfy psi greater than 1. Therefore, we cannot a new we cannot hope to find a new optimum which is having a value of y which is less than what would have been found by psi greater than or equal to 0. In this case, it so happened that even psi greater than 1, we are still having the same optimum. But now, if I change it to x1 plus x2 minus 18 is greater than 0, the situation is different. So, since the feasible region is reducing, it is it is but logical that you can have the y outside the new feasible region, but you cannot have a new y which is lower than what could not be captured by a less restrictive feasible region. Okay? Now, let us, uh, let us do 31 subject to okay? shall we redraw the whole thing. Okay, fine. Now, let us work this problem out. Two four X one. I am going to have trouble, right? So, I have to join this 18 and 18. Okay. So, now if you take this 6 and so there are some there are some iso y iso y contours. So, what color would you use for? Now, I have to join this, right? So, this is 0. So, this is the feasible region now. The original solution H 6 is now below this feasible region. So, it has cut, it has cut this iso objective curves in such a way that the original H 6 is lost. It is no longer a valid solution to the problem because it violates the inequality constraint x1 plus x2 minus 18 is greater than 0, right. Fine. Now, what is the new, sol new solution we worked out, right? We can do this, right? Do psi equal to 0, right? where psi is x 1 plus x 2. What is the solution? 10 comma 8. So, solution is now, let us say that instead of x 1 plus, now I say instead of psi greater than 0, now I have psi greater than equal to 1. 
that means x1 plus x2 minus 19 is greater than 0. Okay. That means I am cutting this I am cutting the feasible region further. So I I am not able to show 19 here. So this is so I can rework, we can rework. You have the basic from framework. Can you tell me the solution? 10.5, 8.5. Correct? Yeah. What is this? This 2x1, 2x1 minus 8 minus u equal to 0. 2x1 2x2 minus 6 minus u is equal to 0. If you combine these two, x1 minus x2 is equal to 2. Right? This one says x1 plus x2 minus 19 equal to 0. Therefore, this fellow has to be 10.5, this has to be 8.5. So simple, right? So the new solution is 10.5, 8.5. What are the what is the y old for this? X1 minus h whole square plus x2 minus 6 whole square. Yeah, what is the problem? Minus 19 then it's greater than 1 half. X1 plus x2 minus 19. Yeah. X1 plus x2 minus 18 is greater than 1 therefore x1 plus x2 minus 19 is greater than 0 okay so you have to be alert so now for this the y old is 8 what is the y new Twelve point five. now tell me now tell me u is equal to del y by del psi is equal to 12.5 minus 8 divided by 1 that is 4.5 so when it was an inactive when it was an inactive or a non binding constraint the value of u was 0 when it is an active constraint u is positive there is no other possibility for u therefore u has to be greater than or equal to 0 which is the last condition, the condition which follows the complementary slack condition, complementary slackness condition. Okay, so I come again. While lambda or the Lagrange multiplier is unrestricted in sign, u has got to, u has got to be greater than or equal to zero. Now it's clear why u is positive. Okay, so we'll close our discussion on Lagrange multiplier with this. We'll start a new chapter now. Yeah, the story is therefore u is positive, right? Now we start off new chapter search methods okay what is the key point the key point in a search method okay regardless of whether it is a calculus based method or a search method there is always an objective function you have a set of constraints you also have bounds for the variables and all that you want to solve the optimization problem you want to find out the maximum or minimum of a particular function but for some reason it is very difficult or you don't want to use the lagrange multiplier because there are too many variables it not differentiable what blah blah whatever you are seeking an alternative route to solving the optimization problem because you have access to big computers for example you are good at programming and this thing and or the number of variables is too many the lagrange multiplier method is unwieldy what will be the key point if you start using a search method? What will you first do if you, use a search, if you want to use search method? What will be the cardinal principle or the key point? Not reduce. I am just for for, us, for starters. For starters, how will you how will you start? 
choose choose a point or choose some points choose a point or choose some point some point means if it is x1 if it is a two variable problem x1 x2 pairs you will choose that may be 1 2 3 4 5 whatever you will you will calculate the value of y at each of these points among these five points you will decide in which way y is increasing or decreasing and then choose the best point among this then you can build some other points around this and okay so on what basis you decide which point is better and which point is not better it's completely based on the value of the value of the objective function there is no place for dy by dx1 minus lambda du d psi by dx2 or derivatives don't come into picture at all in fact in the lagrange multiplier method we solve the problem even in quizzes and exams i seen people solve the problem and forget that ultimately you have to get the value of y they forget they just say x1 equal to 4x2 is equal to 6 the problem doesn't end there what is the y corresponding to that value of that value of the combination of variables so in fact the calculation of the objective function is relegated to the end in the generally in the calculus method you are you are obsessed you are more or less worried about where the function becomes stationary where the function becomes stationary but in real life sometimes the function will not become stationary at all because the function itself may not be differentiable allocation of job allocation for you got five you got a milling machine cnc lay this thing nc machine all these things and you want the minimum cost or you want to have the best allocation for a two specialists and all that we we cannot have a curve and differentiate and all that's all nice mathematically but it's not possible to implement that's why it is engineers who have developed genetic algorithms simulated and any all these things where it is possible for me to repeatedly get the values of y for several combinations of x1 to xn however it is impossible for me to fit a function which could be differentiated why should calculus be always a route to solving problems okay why should every function be differentiable <laughs> why that is one way of looking at things that is not the only way of looking at things okay so the key point is we look at certain combinations of variables evaluate y at these points come to some conclusions then proceed further lagrange multiplier calculation of y push to the end this is more physical each and every iteration we are seeing how y improves or not doesn't improve and all that of course there are so many issues if it is a multiple um, uh, local minima and all that how do you handle we'll we'll systematically go through all that okay so this looks like a, an engineering approach to some problems an engineering approach to problems where it is not possible or we don't want to take the derivatives right now but what is the difficulty with the search method conceptual difficulty ah true optimum can never be reached you will say that the optimum could lie between 1.4 and 1.5 if an accuracy of for example the optimum radius of the cylindrical solar water heat solar water heater storage problem varies between 0.8 and it lies between 0.8 and 0.9 that is if you decide on accuracy of 0.1 meter 
if you say I no 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 I want an accuracy of 0.01, you will say between 0.85 and 86, but you are always giving bounds because you are not trying to solve dy by dx equal to 0. True optimum can never be reached, true optimum can only be approached, but that is okay, we are uh, we, will, we are ready to live with it, okay. So, we specify a final interval of uncertainty, okay. a final So, we specify a final interval of uncertainty. That is, we say that y optimum lies between these two values of x or between these two combinations of x1 to xn. Okay. Now, so this is a key concept the interval of uncertainty. So, the search method essentially now you can comprehend that the search method will essentially be an iterative technique where you originally start with some interval of uncertainty which may come from your background knowledge or from your engineering this thing or from previous knowledge, right. You have to start. You cannot say that uh, cylindrical storage water problem, I will start with uh, 1 micron to 300 meters. It is after all a storage tank which has to be kept outside, you cannot talk like a mathematician. So, you will say that at least it should be 10 or 20, 10 or 20 centimeters or 30 centimeters, it cannot be more than 4 or 5 meters. You bracket it and then start using the search method. So, your original interval of uncertainty is specified before starting the problem. Then you use a search method and hopefully with every iteration the interval of uncertainty will go will go down will go down so as the number of iterations increases the interval of uncertainty will go down so we will now try to understand this concept of interval of uncertainty with an example Let us start off with the problem, problem number 32, revisit the cylindrical, revisit the solar water heater storage problem. So, A equal to 2 pi r square plus 2 pi r h v is equal to pi r squared h is equal to 4, goal minimize a because minimizing a minimizes the total heat transfer that is it minimizes the heat losses. So, it can, it can be used during the night time. So, we made some approximation the heat transfer coefficient is constant, the T infinity is constant and all that. This can be treated as a single variable problem and you can solve it by directly by taking dA by dr equal to 0 as a single variable problem or as a unconstrained or you can treat it as an unconstrained op optimization problem and use Lagrange multiplier method. You can treat it as a constrained optimi optimization problem using Lagrange multiplier method and get an additional parameter called lambda which is the sensitivity of A with respect to V. All these concepts we have already studied. Now, we will see how to use search method. There is no need to use search method for this problem, but we are always trying to benchmark, we are always trying to compare with the uh, Lagrange multiplier in this case, because we know what the true solution is. Okay, that is a standard way of, we have a frame of reference. Now, we want to treat it as a single variable problem in R, then we will take reasonable values of uh, the original interval of uncertainty for R, then we will work out and let us see how, how the pro uh, solution proceeds. Okay. Now,
So, treat it Okay, so A will be equal to is that right? Now Not zero is too bad, huh? Zero it will be singularity, huh? So consider a reasonable interval. You expect the solution to lie between 0.5 meter, at least it should be 50 centimeter, because it is a 4,000 liter tank. Otherwise, the height will be too much. 3.5. This is basically to start from somewhere, and let's say step size is 0.5 meter. Use the single variable search. Use the single variable search. The problem is like this. Use the single variable search. Given this interval and step size, and get a new interval of uncertainty. Okay. The problem is like this. For the cylindrical, for the solar water heat storage problem, convert it to a single variable optimization, unconstrained optimization problem in radius r, and start with an original original interval of uncertainty 0.5 to 3.5 with the step size of 0.5 using the search method this is called the exhaustive search method using the exhaustive search method arrive at the final interval of uncertainty for those people who don't know how to start you have to just draw a tabular column and then use common sense how many divisions are there 1 1.5 2 2.53 5 divisions so how many functional evaluations are there seven functional evaluations five intermediate points and two end points so i i need eight columns here two okay so serial number r a of r I got 8, is it? Okay, the last one is not required. Yeah, please get me the values of A. You should just take 3 4 minutes, that is all. Then we will also plot it. Should we take attendance now so that you fill up the values? Yes, got okay. Ah, so please tell the values 0.5. Ah. Ah. Good. Three three, huh? Ah. 42 point? 79.21. point?
So, we will do it approximately 0 0.5 it is about 17, 14 then it goes up 1.5, 2, 2 okay so okay now what is the funda now what is the funda solution like 0 0.5 to 1 no what is it ah, solution lies between 0 0.5 to 1.5 we do not know whether the minimum is reached between 0 0.5 and 1 or 1 to 1 1.5 but between 0 0.5 and 1 it takes a turn from 17 it became 14 it again became 19 therefore the culprit is between 0 0.5 and 1.5 i can't say it is in 0 0.5 and 1 okay so what did we achieve we did seven functional evaluations we did seven functional evaluations and reduced the interval of uncertainty from 3 meters to 1 meter which is not great but it is not very bad also okay so what what we have done now what we have done now is called the exhaustive search method okay so this is the so equal interval exhaustive search method you divided the whole interval into so many number of points you had intermediate points and then you had two boundaries you evaluated the function and you could bracket you could say that the optimum now li lies between this value of r and this value okay so we will say this R2 huh? B A and B are the end points ok. So, we are evaluating A less than equal to R less than equal to B. number of intermediate points equal to m huh? for this problem m equal to 5. Vikram, what is the problem? Is it okay? Fine. So, uh, interval spacing. Three point five meter minus point five meter. Three meter divided by six. That is equal to m plus b minus a divided by m plus one. correct okay what is the new interval of uncertainty b minus a divided by m plus 1 into 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 2 by half 2 times b minus a by m plus 1 what is b minus a by m plus 1 0.5, 0 0.5. but what is the actual final interval of uncertainty 1 meter because it is between 0 0.5 and 1.5 meter therefore it is 2 times this therefore final interval of uncertainty so this is 0.5 meter here here means in this problem final interval
2 times m plus 1 right. All equispace. What is the original interval of uncertainty? Three meters. B minus. B minus. B minus. B minus. A. I mean, why, why, why can't you say it in the language of math, mathematics? Original interval of uncertainty was. B. I am trying to derive a general relationship. Original interval of uncertainty is B minus A. Therefore, therefore, original by equal to correct okay this is called as rr R R is the reduction ratio of the algorithm. How much the interval reduces? R R is the reduction ratio. It is a performance metric, just like mileage for your car, CGPA for the academic performance. R R gives the power of the algorithm in reducing the original original interval of uncertainty. R R has to be read in conjunction with the number of observations. If you have m observations, the reduction ratio is m plus one by two if you use exhaustive search method. Therefore, scientists would not have kept quiet. They would have developed more and more advanced methods, where for a given m observations, you will have a reduction ratio RR, which is far superior to what, what could be achieved by the exhaustive search method, because the exhaustive search method is almost stupid. It is least it is unimaginative to say the least, but in the absence of any other technique, for starters it is okay. You can start with the, if you do not know anything about the nature of the uh, function and all that, you can use the exhaustive search method to bracket between 0 0.5 and 1.5, you have done that. After you get 0 0.5 and 1.5, you can use very sophisticated methods and quickly get to 0 0.866 meter, which is, which is the original solution to the problem. Therefore, this RR is the reduction ratio of the algorithm, of the search algorithm. Okay. What is the relationship between m and the number of observations? Number of intermediate points is something which I do not like. I would much rather work with the number of observations. That is number of observations is a number of functional evaluations. Why we are saying observations? It could also be experimental. In this case, we just got it as 2 pi r squared plus 2 pi r h. Sometimes each of these A could be the output of a finite element program from Comsol or for fluent from fluent or some experiments or could be the data from a cardiologist, radiologist, oncologist, whatever. You, know, you are trying to seek some maximum minimum something. Therefore, we are interested in the number of observations. Therefore, if n is the number of observations, n equal to how much here? In this problem, n equal to I mean 7. n is equal to m plus 2. Therefore, rr is fine n minus 
see some books will give n min n plus 1 by 2 some books will give n by 2 and all that when n is 100 or 200 or 300 it doesn't hardly matter whether it is n okay just like when you work out the standard error of the estimate divided by root of some n minus 2 and all that we do. i told you know because n minus 2 is the number of degrees of freedom for a linear fit because two points you don't have any freedom if you just have two points like that when n is 100 or 200 it hardly matters whether it is n by 2 or n minus 1 by 2 can you solve the same problem using the same exhaustive search method little more in a little more smarter fashion same funda same logic exhaustive search little more smartly so that sometimes there is hope that with less than m n, n minus 1 observations you can I don't want any fundas. Exhaustive search. Oh, you, you, you should not write one more program to optimize m. <laughs> if you take the midpoint, already it is some other algorithm. Interval size, everything is same. Number of points, everything is same. So what we can do is, instead of taking seven functional evaluations, instead of dividing, you divide it into five points, intermediate five points, and have seven evaluations. You can do the same thing and start from the left hand side and take only 3 points at a time, right. You have 0.5, 1, 1.5, 2, 2.5, 3, 3.5. You can start looking at 0.5, 1 and 1 1.5. f of x1 is greater than f of x2, f of x2 is less than f of x3, you are home, but it is fortuitous. It is fortuitous that at one side of the interval you got it you will get rg if you start from 3.5 using my method <laughs> you start with 3.5 3 2.5 anand you didn't quite get it uh, okay so ah uh, if you start with 0.5 what i'm saying is take three three points at a time logic is very simple take three points at a time 0.5 1 and 1.5 if f of x1 is greater than f of x2 but f of x2 is less than f of x3 then the optimum lies between 1 and 3 terminate the program else x1 is equal to x2 x2 is equal to x3 x3 is equal to x2 plus delta x that is you will take points 2 3 4 find out go to point 3 3 4 5 till you go to the end point when you finally reach the end point still you are not able to get an optimum either there is no optimum to the problem or the optimum lies in one of the two boundaries so this is another smart way of writing the same algorithm on an average if on an average if the solution is as when you is likely to be around the middle it will it may take only half the number of observations which i have put here this is what is called as the worst case scenario for the exhaustive search but if you if you adopt the method which i have discussed in the class you are already dividing it into intermediate points and you a priori or up front you are evaluating all but beyond 1.5 it was not required. But before starting the problem you do not know whether it is 1.5 or 2.5 or 3. So an alternative approach is start with 3 at a time. Yes, Vinay, what is the problem? Two, two places if it turns, one being less than the other then. One point, one point. Suppose the a local optimum. Yeah. Then there is a local optimum all that. So I am coming to it. So in the next class, uh, now I have to start discussing what is a unimodal function and what is a unimodal function. and what is a monotonic function and all that. Shall we write the other algorithm now? Okay, and then we will close. Yeah. Somebody has a doubt? Yeah, go ahead. Is this is this clear now? So I will just write the algorithm. Alternative approach. So, delta r okay. 
So. Please correct me if you make a mistake m plus 1, m minus 1 or n plus 1, I mean for doing fine. Okay. Now, if Stop. Else, else, R one is R two, right? Is it from progr programming point of view? What I'm, what, what I'm saying is right. R2 is equal to R3, R3 is equal to R2 plus delta R, but this is the new R2 man, okay. Already I changed it, it is in the language of programming, okay. Check. Then what happens? If it is yes, we will go back, right. So, if no stop, then it means or may lay at the boundary. So, essentially what we are doing is So, this f of x 1 and this f of x 2. If you are looking for a maximization problem, if f of x 2 is greater than f of x 1, so basically key concept, two point test. Suppose you take two points, which, which will become clear when we look at other search techniques. If you are using a two point test, what it means is you take two values of x, calculate the values of f of x at these two points. If you are actually looking for an optimization problem, if f of x 2 is greater than f of x 1, what does it mean? The region to the left of f x 1 can be eliminated. Because it may also go like this, but I am sure that it since it is a monotonic function, I will tell you that wow, what are the conditions for mono, monotonicity and all that. If it is a monotonic function, what I can do is when I do an interval search, when I when I am applying a search algorithm, I can confidently say that the interval all values of x to the left of x 1 can be eliminated, but whatever is to the right of x 1 has to be retained. Okay. So, if I have an interval like this, if I have two points, then I can eliminate one portion, okay. this will get eliminated, then I will have two points one will get eliminated, I will keep on cutting it. Okay. These are, so obviously you can see that when I propose the two point test, I am talking about some search algorithms which will be much superior compared to the exhaustive search, because if I choose the two points very close to the center, 
I can cut 50 percent of the interval right away with just two functional evaluations. You can never hope to do that using the exhaustive search. Okay. Why much, why so much fuss about a single variable optimization when you know in life it is only multivariable problems which you encounter. The point there is most multi, most multivariable optimization problems are reduced to single variable optimization in the particular variable. You will if it is x 1, x 2, x 3 you will optimize with respect to x 1, x 2, x 3. Therefore, the key to the whole thing is the development of an efficient single optimization technique. Therefore, all papers most papers most research has focused on single optimization techniques for a single variable problem. So, we will meet tomorrow.